I'm working in the shop again today and it's more tear down on the Jubilee. In the last video, you guys saw me get it to this point. We got the head pulled off. That was the big goal. And today, what, what I would like to do is finish with the tear down. I think there's, there's a little bit more up here in the front. I actually want to get the whole front axle off of this thing, get the tractor up on jack stands or blocks, whatever. <laughs> whatever fits and I may even go ahead and pull the steering box and all of this off I'd like to get the pistons pulled out today as well. Still a lot of work to do. We better get after it That's what's going on today on farmer Tyler ranch like a fresh break too. Well, I was trying to get this other radius arm off of here, which is the arm that supports the front axle. As I was trying to do that, I could tell that it was bound up. Long story short, I think we've reached the point where it's time to get this thing up on stands because in order to free this radius arm up, I need to take all the weight off of it and I'm gonna put it on stands anyway. So. I think now's a good time. So now I just have to find some good stands and I know I've got some nice solid blocks here. I kind of hate to cut them up, but I think I'm gonna have to. It looks pretty good. Uh, let's do a safety test because I am gonna have to be doing some work underneath that engine block. So we wanna make sure this is nice and solid. I kind of prefer blocks over jack stands just because you can't really crush a block like you could a jack stand. They seem a little bit more stable. I don't know, maybe they're not, but um, yeah, let's give this thing a little shake and see if I can knock it over. Well, it looks pretty good to me. I don't think it'll ever shake that hard while I'm working on it. So let's go ahead and finish tearing this thing down. Two different size lug nuts. You gotta love that. Hasn't been off in a while. I was actually just about to do that. Oh. I've got most of the front end tore apart here. There was one, well, two bolts I should say. These two that are used to adjust the width of the axle and they are pretty well seized up in there and I just decided that's a battle I don't wanna fight. I fought it before and it's not easy and I don't need to move this. The only reason I was taking it apart was just to lighten this up a little bit. And I think I've more or less decided that I am gonna to try to paint the tractor. So taking things apart like this makes painting it a little bit easier. But in this case, I think we'll be all right just leaving this all as one unit. So with that being said, I did want to show you guys what what I'm sort of chasing here or what's worn out on this axle, why I got so much movement on the front end. On these tractors, you've got a pin that goes through here and that's what the axle pivots on. And inside here, there's a bushing and you can tell that this is very worn. I don't feel like we should have this much movement. Um, you can roll it forward, you can twist side to side. So something in here is, is shot. I used to notice that a lot when I was feeding out in the pasture. I could just, I could feel it in the steering wheel because that front end was kind of 
doing its own thing and I'd replaced tie rod ends, I'd replaced, uh, rebuilt the steering box, I did all the things that I could think of that would allow movement in the front end and this is the only thing that I didn't do and now that I've got it all apart I can see this, this was in fact the problem. As I'm working on this tractor, I'm thinking about, well, what am I gonna use this for? How am I going to take advantage of all the work that I'm putting into it? And originally I was thinking, well, this would be good to pull the manure spreader, to move trailers around, things like that. And it would be good for that. But for as much as I would need it for those purposes, it, it doesn't really justify a full rebuild. Now, if I do, what I'm kind of planning on doing now, and that is taking the front end loader off of the 8N and putting it onto this tractor, then I can justify putting a lot more work into this and parts like the axle pivot, the steering, all those things, it makes a lot more sense to go ahead and put the extra work to do that right. I feel like this tractor is better suited for loader work. It's got a little bit of a lower first gear and it's a little bit more powerful and those are and those are probably the two biggest complaints I have about running the loader on the 8N. The other reason that makes this tractor a great candidate for loader work is the fact that the three-point arms don't work. The PTO might work. I actually don't know if it works or not. Um, and the reason that the three-point arms don't work is because we're missing a lot of pieces. I remember Grandpa telling me when I was a kid that... Um, he'd pretty much gutted all the hydraulic parts out of this thing because they didn't work. And what he used this for mostly was pulling an old baler. So he had no use for that stuff. So if I have the loader on this tractor, I will have no use for that stuff either. And then that will kind of free up the 8N to do all those other kind of little jobs that I was talking about before. And on that tractor, we do have a functional PTO and a functional three point. So. I don't know how long it's gonna to take to carry out this plan, but that's that's sort of what I'm leaning towards right now. What are the odds? Oh, well, look at that. That's what I was afraid of. All right, I'm gonna figure out how to get this thing out of here. She's stuck all right. Hmm, this could be a problem. Oh, goodness. It did move about an eighth of an inch. So in my experience, if you can get it to move a little bit, you can get it to move a lot. Ah, that's not what we wanted. Now what do I do? Well, this is not ideal, but I, I think what I can do is take this, uh, I don't even know what you call this, but the piece that holds the axle just bolts to the front of the engine. So I think I can take the entire assembly off. It's gonna be heavy, but once I do that, then I can tip this up and I think I can just pound this out with the hammer. on one. Just like that. Hey, look at that. It worked. There it is. Okay. So I believe the jack's got it there. Now, oh, it's not terribly heavy. Okay. Hmm, that's going. We did it like that. And then I don't have to have my hand right there. Hey, look at that. I think we might have got it. Well, finally was able to get this thing broken apart and now that I can see what, what all was in there, it's no wonder that the axle was moving so much. If you look at the pin here, 
you can see that it's got a big flat spot in it and obviously that's just from wear bouncing around through the field and then the bushing that's actually in the axle only about half of it's left and it's very thin so um, yeah hopefully when the new parts go in there it'll really make this a lot more solid All right, I think we're ready to pull pistons. making progress now uh, got the pistons out as you saw and as I look over this engine uh, all the cylinders actually look pretty good to me I don't notice any scoring or abnormal wear so I don't think there's any reason to resleeve this or to send the block to a machine shop the pistons and the rod bearings look pretty decent as well uh, I can see some wear on the rings which I would expect and some you know there's wear on everything really um, so I'll probably end up replacing a lot of this. It's one of those things where it's like you go this far to not replace those things. You know, you just kind of have to. So we'll definitely get new rings. I think we'll definitely get new rod bearings as well. I'm torn as to whether or not I want to replace the pistons. These are probably fine, but uh, I don't know. That's something I got to think about a little bit more. At this point, I don't intend to pull out the crankshaft or the cam. I just, I don't think there's really any need for it. I think for now, just because I know that this, this engine was running good before it started having the sputtering issues, which I'm still thinking is from that air cleaner. I don't really see the need to go that deep into this. But hey, when I set out on this project, I didn't plan on going this far with it. I didn't really plan on painting it. And now I feel like that's what I'm gonna do. So the plan can always change, but for now, that's kind of what it looks like. With that being said, let's go ahead and tear the rest of this down. as far as we're going to make it in this video i know every time i set out to film a video about this tractor i think i'm going to reach a certain milestone like i thought i was going to get everything torn down completely but what keeps happening is the further i get into it the further i want to go with it and it's kind of like you you're always asking yourself like well if i'm going to go this far then why not just do that? If I'm gonna do that, then why not just do this? Before you know it, I've got this thing tore down so far where it's like, well, it's really not that much work to just tear it down the rest of the way, take the fenders off, take the pedals off, take the floorboards off, remove the rear tires. And as long as I've gone this far, and if I am gonna paint it, then obviously I need to go through and fix all the oil leaks. A couple of which are around the rear end here that have driven me crazy for a long time. That's all gonna have to wait for another video. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.